Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Dr. Naz and today I am going to discuss about tuberculosis. It is the world's leading cause of death from a single infectious disease and it is most commonly caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. It is an acid fast bacillus. The mode of transmission is via inhalation of aerosolized droplets nuclei from infected patients. So the bacilli are inhaled and lodged in the alveoli. Bacilli then initiate the recruitment of macrophages and lymphocytes. The surviving organisms multiply and disseminate via lymphatics and the bloodstream. The macrophages undergo transformation into epithelioid and Langerhans cells which aggregate with lymphocytes to form the granulomas. So this is the picture, histological picture of Langerhans cells or also known as giant cell. These are formed by the fusion of epithelioid cells which are the macrophages basically and they contain the nuclei which are arranged in the horseshoe shaped pattern in the cell periphery. They are not specific for tuberculosis but they are present in tuberculosis. So this is the picture of uh, caseating granuloma. It has a necrotic base and which contains dead bacteria or live bacteria and infected macrophages then surrounded by macrophages then it is surrounded by another type of macrophages which is known as epithelioid macrophages and these epithelioid macrophages are then combined and fused together to form multinucleated giant cell so the difference between a caseating granuloma and non caseating granuloma that occurs in sarcoidosis is that in caseating granuloma there is always the presence of necrotic tissue whereas in non caseating there will be inflammatory cells only as i have told you earlier that numerous langerhans cells will combine to form a granuloma then the numerous granulomas will aggregate in the periphery of the lung and they will form gohan focus and it is the primary lesion of tuberculosis then these gohan focus will combine along with the enlargement of lymph nodes they will called as gohan complex Ranke's complex is gohan complex which undergoes fibrosis and calcification I'll show you pictures in the next slides. Reparative process in case the primary complex in a fibrous capsule limiting the spread of the bacilli. After the resolution of the primary infection, the organism remains dormant within the granuloma and any insult to the immune system will result in the activation of TB at any time. So this is the picture of Wuhan focus marked with the arrows which is formed by the fusion of multiple granulomas. And this is the picture of Gohan complex which is Gohan focus along with enlarged hilar lymph nodes. You can clearly appreciate that the lymph nodes are enlarged and a Gohan complex can also be seen in this slide. This is Ranke's complex. You can appreciate calcification here. So primary pulmonary TB. It refers to the infection of a previously unaffected individual. It is usually asymptomatic. But if the immune system is incomplete, the pulmonary and constitutional symptoms of the TB may develop. Then it will known as progressive primary TB. So there may be influenza-like illness, lymphadenopathy, collapse of the lung and consolidation. They both appear on the right middle lobe. Cavitation, miliary TB, meningitis and pericarditis may occur. Secondary tuberculosis also known as active tuberculosis or post primary tuberculosis. It occurs when the host immunity is weak. Example in HIV, malignancy or diabetes mellitus. It affects the most oxygenated part of the lungs that is apex of the lungs. And uh, the clinical features may include chronic cough with hemoptysis, low grade fever, night sweats, weight loss, malaise and loss of appetite. Spontaneous pneumothorax can also occur in tuberculosis. The uh, presence of miliary pattern and cavitation are the indications of active disease. So what is miliary TB? It refers to acute diffuse dissemination of tuberculous bacillus via bloodstream. So it is basically dissemination of tubercle. Clinical features may include 2-3 to three weeks of fever, night sweats, anorexia, weight loss and dry cough. Hepatosplenomegaly may also occur. Headache may indicate a coexisting meningitis. 
Fundoscopy will show choroidal tubercles and chest x-ray will show millet seed appearance. These are fine 1 to 2 mm lesions distributed throughout the lung feed. I will show you the pictures in the next slide. This is fundoscopy and you can clearly see choroidal tubercles pointed with an arrow. This is chest x-ray showing millet seed appearance. These are a small 1 to 2 mm lesions which are distributed throughout the lung fields. So the complications of pulmonary TB may include massive hemoptysis. It can occur due to erosion of any of the pulmonary vessel. Core pulmonial can also occur which is right sided heart failure secondary to any disease in the lung or pulmonary vessels. So here the disease is in the lung so it will result in right sided heart failure. Aspergilloma which is fungal ball infection. It occurs because the immunity is low in a tuberculosis patient and there can be superimposed infection with fungus. Bronchiectasis can also occur and bronchopal pleural fistula can also be formed. In non-pulmonary complications there can be enteritis. It is due to swallowing of the sputum which is infected with bacteria. Anorectal disease can also occur due to swallowing of a sputum. Ponsets polyarthritis is also a complication of pulmonary TB. It is a symmetrical joint inflammation. It usually occurs in young adults and it is immunological response against tuberculosis. So there will be no bacteria in the joints. The extra pulmonary involvement can occur in the lymph nodes, gastrointestinal tract, pericardial cavity, bones and joints and central nervous system. We will discuss all these in the coming slides. So for, for the lymph nodes, lymph node is the most common extra pulmonary site of the disease and the most common in the lymph nodes is cervical and mediastinal lymph nodes. The clinical features may include painless lymph node enlargement. Nodes will be mobile initially then they become mated and can superate with sinus formation. The tuberculin test is usually strongly positive. A scrofula can also be formed. It is called massive cervical lymph node enlargement with discharging sinus. The picture is in the next slide. See these are cervical lymph nodes enlargement and you can see the superative pus which is coming from the sinuses. So in the gastrointestinal tract the most common site of tuberculosis is ileocecal region and the main differential will be from Crohn disease. Also you can say that typhoid fever because there is initially lymphoid enlargement in the typhoid and uh, the clinical features may include same B symptoms fever, anorexia, night sweats and weight loss. Other than this, right iliac fossa mass can be felt on examination. Acute abdomen can also be present in 30% of the cases. Tuberculous parotonitis can also occur, which is characterized by abdominal distension, pain, and constitutional symptoms. A cytoid is exudative with predominance of lymphocytes. Pericardial disease is characterized by pericardial effusion or constrictive pericarditis. So in the pericardial effusion what happens that the patient might have thick or calcified pericardium as well. This will lead to dilation of the major blood veins and it occurs due to backing up of the blood because heart is kind of entrapped. So the heart will be seen as a globular structure on the chest x-ray and there will be breathness, breathlessness and abdominal swelling due to collection of fluid in the abdomen and uh, fever night sweats are uncommon JVP will be raised due to backup of the blood there will be hepatomegaly due to the same reason prominent ascites and peripheral edema uh, due to fluid around the heart there will be increased pericardial dullness in the constrictive pericarditis, breathlessness and abdominal swelling will occur. Fever and night sets are uncommon. Raised AVP, patomegaly, prominent ascites and peripheral edema. Same the reason as peri in pericardial effusion. The early third heart sound and a pericardial calcification is seen in 25% of cases. The central nervous system, it may cause TB meningitis or tuberculoma, which is a space occupying lesion. I have attached the picture of tuberculoma. You can see multiple tuberculomas in the CT scan. 
so in bone involvement when the tb infects the spine it is known as pots disease and it is the most common side of tuberculosis in the bone and in the spine it will mostly affect lower thoracic and lumbar region and it will distort these regions result in kyphosis that is involvement of anterior vertebral bodies chronic back pain may also occur because infection involves the disc intervertebral disc and it results in discitis the source abscess may also occur which is a cold abscess in inguinal region the main differential diagnosis will be malignancy but in malignancy there will be involvement of vertebral body in only and there will be no disc involvement in joints the most common site is hip and knee ponsets arthropathy can occur and i have discussed this earlier that it is a reactive arthritis it involves the joint symmetrically and it's mostly present in young individual it is the immunological response against tuberculosis and in the bones and joints there will be no bacteria present it starts within 2 months of starting treatment of tb this is the pots disease you can see the spine the whitish area is or hyperdense area is showing pots disease the chest x ray will show the upper lobe infiltrates with cavitation which is a classic finding there can be collapse calcification pleural effusion may also be present the second test which should be done for diagnosis is sputum staining in this there will be direct microscopy of sputum and it is the most important first step positive smear is sufficient for presumptive diagnosis of tb methods can be using two of the following stain either oramin fluorescent test or zeal nelson stain zeal nelson is less sensitive but it is you in our area mostly uh, if patient is not expectorating the sputum then the sputum can be obtained by using bronchoscopy and lavage or by induction with nebulized hypertonic saline sputum culture it is required for definitive diagnosis of the tb so the three morning specimens should be collected the methods can be any one of the following solid media which is also known as lovenstein jensen medium and it takes 4 to 6 weeks liquid media back tech system it takes 1 to 3 week and nucleic acid amplification which is called pcr it is done more rapidly and uh, you need to memorize the name of medium because it is also important so for the diagnosis of extra pulmonary tb we can perform fluid examination example csf aseptic fluid pleural fluid or joint space fluid and uh, we can perform tissue biopsy from lymph node or bone marrow and liver biopsy so the management include initial phase and continuation phase initial phase is of 2 months period and then for the 4 months it is continuation phase so the four drugs are used in initial phase which are isoniazid rifampicin pyrazinamide and ethambutol and in the continuation phase there will be use of isoniazid and rifampicin only extended treatment which is done for the duration of 9 to 12 months it is only indicated in one of the following conditions either the patient is hiv positive or the tuberculous ostrom malitis is there or the patient is having biliary tb meningitis in meningitis minimum 12 month treatment is required in pregnancy because first line agent pyrazinamide is contraindicated in pregnancy if drug intolerance occurs and a second line agent is substituted then you will also go for extended treatment so these are the first line agents given in tuberculosis first is isoniazid and it should always be started with vitamin b6 also known as pyridoxine to prevent the symptoms of deficiency example peripheral neuropathy stomatitis glossitis kilosis and convulsions these also can occur, these all can occur due to deficiency of vitamin b6 so when you start uh, isoniazid vitamin b6 is essential and the toxicity of isoniazid is seen by hepatitis peripheral neuropathy sle like syndrome and psychosis so next is rifampicin in rifampicin toxicity there will be orange to red color urine or tears 
and hepatitis and thrombocytopenia may also occur. It induces P450 enzyme system and there will be acute renal shutdown. Mm, orange discoloration is a benign finding and does not need any treatment. Third is ethambutol. So ethambutol involves eye. So it will cause optic neuritis, color blindness for green, decreased visual acuity and central escotoma. All are the eye involvement symptoms. Uh, so if there is any of the symptoms then you have to reduce the dose or stop the drug. Pyrazinamide as I have told you earlier that it is contraindicated in pregnancy. It causes photosensitization, hyperuricemia, gout. Streptomycin involves 8th cranial nerve which is vestibular nerve. So it is autotoxic drug. Agranulocytosis and nephrotoxicity also occurs. It is used only if the patient has multi-drug resistant TB or not responding to the therapy. Otherwise, it is not used and it should also be avoided in pregnancy. So, these therapies are given as directly observed therapy also known as DOT therapy. And what is DOT therapy? It needs to be given under supervision. So, there is supervised administration of antituberculous treatment three times per week. It aims to improve adherence which is a major factor in prolonged illness, risk of relapse and the emergence of the drug resistance because it is a very long course so you need to directly monitor the administration of the drug. So the second line agents includes quinolones, amikacin, canamycin, captiomycin and cycloserine. So in uh, pericardial TB or tuberculous meningitis there will be a role of steroids so steroids should be added along with antituberculous drugs in these two conditions and uh, what is multi-drug resistant tb it is the tb which is resistant to isoniazid and rifampicin whereas xdr tb which is extended drug resistant tb is resistant to isoniazid rifampicin also from second line agent that is quinolone and at least one of the one of these three second line agents that is canamycin, captiomycin and amicacin. Montox test also known as tuberculin test or purified protein derivative PPD skin test. It is not a general screening test for the whole population. However, it is indicated in those individuals who are asymptomatic with latent TB. And the PPD is not useful in those who are symptomatic or those with the abnormal chest x-ray. So these patients should have sputum acid fast testing rather than PPD. What is the mechanism of Montox test? It is based on the cell mediated immunity with the development of induration and inflammation at the site of the injection due to infiltration with mainly T lymphocytes. So how do we do it? There will be intradermal injection of 0.1 ml of a 1 is 2000 strength PPT on the volar aspect of the forearm in duration but not erythema. That means you have to see the bump, not the reddish discoloration. It is measured after 72 hours the infection. Positive test is in duration of more than 15 millimeter. If the patient has no risk factor and in duration of more than 10 millimeter with patients having risk factors. These are positive tests. And what are the risk factors? The prisoner, healthcare worker, close contact of someone with TB hematological malignancy, alcoholic, diabetes mellitus and IV drug users. So if these risk factors are present and there is induration of more than 10 mm then it is considered as positive. Induration of more than 5 mm is considered positive in HIV positive patient, immunocompromised patient who are taking steroids example prednisolone for more than one month. Close contact with the patient with active disease abnormal chest x-ray example showing apical calcifications organ transplant recipient patients so in these patients in duration of even more than 5 millimeter is also sufficient to be considered as positive so this is how the in duration is measured in the tuberculin test so false negative result can also occur in this test what is false negative result that is a disease is present but the test is showing negative result so in severe TB 25% of cases may show false negative result newborn baby and elderly because their immunity is low therefore the T lymphocytes may not 
you know collect over that area and may not cause induration HIV if CD4 count is less than 200 cell per ml malnourished patient and malignancy these all can cause false negative risk guidelines if a patient has positive PPD a second test is not necessary if a patient has negative PPD now but has never had PPD skin testing before a second test is indicated within one to two weeks if the second test is negative it means the patient is truly negative and if the second test is positive it means that the first test was false negative positive PPD test, the first step after a positive PPD test is to do a chest x-ray. If chest x-ray is positive, then you have to start anti-tuberculous therapy. And if the chest x-ray is negative, then you have to start profile access with isoniazid for 9 months. And start profile access with rifampicin for 4 months in cases of isoniazid resistant cases. So BCG vaccine is used for the prevention of tuberculous infection. It is a live attenuated vaccine derived from mycobacterium bovis. It is administered by intradermal injection and it is highly immunogenic. In children, it prevents disseminated disease and TB meningitis. In adults, its efficacy is unknown. It is, however, a very safe vaccine. What are the contraindications of the vaccine? Because it is live attenuated vaccine, so all the immunosuppressed individuals and the pregnant ladies should avoid this vaccine. I hope you learned something from this video. If you do, please like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel so that I get motivation to make videos. And thank you so much for watching.